Hello people of YouTube, I hope you're well. Welcome to my living room and to episode number 29 of my creative podcast. Thank you for joining me today. Welcome if you're a new viewer, welcome back if you are a returning viewer. It's really nice to have you with me. I have been busy these last few weeks, um, so I'm taking the opportunity that I think the weather is still fine. It was very sunny this morning, so I thought I would take the opportunity to actually film a podcast, but I think it's getting a bit overcast, so I will just make it happen before it's uh, before it's night at three o'clock again, like uh, the day before yesterday. Anyway, enough of the weather. I have uh, a few finished objects with a special guest <laughs> at some point. Um, and also several works in progress to show you. So, um, well, let's grab your drink, grab your whip and uh, let's go. I will start with my finished objects. So the smaller one is the uh, Mignon Cardigan by Loop London, which I knit in um, Rosy Sport by Dandelion Yarns. I bought it at Loop as well in May when I was there last. It's a baby cardigan. I have knitted for a friend who chose the, the yarn and the pattern when we were at Loop together in May. Actually, she had never been, <laughs> she had never been in a yarn store and I thought, well, we're just next to it. You know, we've brunched, we're in a good mood let's let's drag her to a yarn store she, she was actually very impressed and we decided that it was as good an, as, an occasion as any to let her choose yarn and a pattern for her baby to come the baby is now one and a half month old so it's uh, high time that i actually offer this cardigan you will notice that there is there's a buttonhole but there's no button yet i need to sew it this afternoon because i think that i'm seeing them tomorrow and it's better with a with the button anyway she chose this red and i think it looks much brighter on the screen that it than it actually is it's like it's 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 really beautiful and she also chose the pattern because uh well she saw she saw the original one hang the sample hanging in the store and she was like wow can you do that can you make it yes i can make it it's much more sophisticated than what i would have chosen myself but i made it anyway i used uh, two strands of the yarn held together because the pattern calls for a dk weight and i used cord and it was fine i was a bit afraid that it might be a little dense but it's not it's just fine what i didn't enjoy that much and what made it a bit less social than my usual than a lot of my projects is that um it has cables particularly these it's five stitches for the cable so you need to be paying attention i don't really actually enjoy cables they're very pretty but i don't think i will ever make myself a, like an aaron jumper with cables everywhere <laughs> i would love to wear it but i wouldn't love to knit it i don't think so at least yeah i am content with <laughs> smaller projects with cables. I made one change on the pattern. It's that the sleeves are normally supposed to be knit flat and then sewn together on, on the bottom, but I didn't want to. So I knit them in the round and I adapted the ribs at the bottom so that it would fit with my count of stitches. And it works. It looks really nice and you can't really say, see any difference well, if you compare it to the original pattern. It's actually funny because the tea I'm drinking this this week, today, was actually offered to me by the same friend who is going to be the recipient of that uh, baby cardigan. She, it's, uh, it's basic green tea well, from China. And it's loose tea leaves which you directly put in the cup and pour the water on top and they actually float at the beginning and drop to the bottom when they're ready, more or less drop. I didn't do it on purpose, but it's a funny coincidence. Where, where was I before I was interrupted by my darling husband coming back from shopping? We're having friends over for tonight and um, he took on the task to go get the supplies. My second finished object is the Cobbeth uh, sweater by Kate Davis Designs. I made mine with wrist wool Bertha I think that's how you say it but I'm not so sure it's a mixed blend I well it's a mixed blend is, isn't that a bit like the same thing it's a blend of different breeds it's not specified which which ones they are um it's um chunky yarn i think it's chunky not bulky chunky um i decided to use it instead of uh, two dk weight yarns held together because i could and <laughs> i bought it at um i bought it at eyf this year well with the specific purpose of making the carbeth so i'm glad i finally did I think my husband is done interrupting me for today. Anyway, maybe I should only 
record podcasts on the weeks when he's not there. Maybe it would make things easier. So I was talking about the carpet. I bought five skeins of the Bertha yarn and I used them up completely, like to the last centimeter. I even had to frog my swatch. I actually had to uh, make fewer rows for the color because I was running out. I just um, I just went as much as I could and, and kept just enough to, to cast off the stitches. <laughs> so, and there you go. I think you have, I think I made like 20, 25 or 26 rows instead of 30 for the color. It's a bottom-up sweater, which was my first time knitting a sweater this way. So you start with the lower part of the body and you go up and then you do the sleeves or maybe you start with the sleeves and then you do the body. But anyway, you make body and sleeves separately and then you join them in the round. And the 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 triangular shape here on the on the sweater is is um, made with decreases, symmetrical decreases. The sweater is actually fully reversible. There is no specific shaping for the back or the front. You can just wear it any way you want. I have, um, it's absolutely not visible on the color itself, but when I touch it, I can feel where it was that the row started and ended. So that's my um, reference for which one is the front and which one is the back. On the video which I made, you will see that there are two lines at the back. It's just that I, uh, I kept it folded and um, it kept the shape a bit. So I will, I will uh, iron it with a wet piece of fabric on top to smooth it down um, a bit more next time I, I wear it. Um, I finished it actually the day before, two days before we went to uh, Inverness. I was, uh, I was really hoping I could actually get to wear it there. I would have put it on to go, well, to take the plane and stuff because it's pretty bulky. It takes quite some space, so, so I would have worn it for the for the travel and uh, and saved the space in my suitcase but it was not possible to wear it without washing and blocking it so i did and on the morning we had to leave the the bottom well, the bottom part of the sleeves were were still completely uh, wet like soaking so i left it at home and i only wore it when i came back i managed to wear it once so far because the weather has been pretty mild i put it on without without a jacket and without um a scarf either on its own just on top of a long sleeve uh, t-shirt i don't find it scratchy or itchy but i'm not that sensitive although i'm i'm still pretty sure that it's a matter of being or getting used to um to more rustic wool but i wear it with long sleeves and a and a brown neck t-shirt because that's all I have. I don't have, what's the name of that? Turtleneck t-shirts and I'm not going to buy one for just that one sweater given that I actually don't really enjoy wearing turtlenecks. And uh, well, I didn't find it unpleasant or scratchy or itchy on my neck so I'm good with it. It was a really quick knit, only I think it took, took me only two weeks which is nice and, and that's basically it. I really liked how, how it went up, you know, it's knit with six and a half millimeter needles so it goes really fast and you can really see quick progress progress and the fabric is dense but it's not not like chain mail you know i think this one will stay my uh speed record for for bigger pieces because my previous record was 19 days for the nordic cardigan but i was knitting only that and a lot for a regular fingering weight uh sweater or a cardigan i don't think it's ever going to happen again that i take only two weeks i'm not i'm not a machine what's actually funny is that um it's my so it's my speed record and the next design the next design the next uh, finished object is also a design by Kate Davis and it's my it's my opposite record <laughs> like the longest it took me to ever knit something it's the Geneva hub which I finally finished when I was in Inverness I was hoping for well I had set a deadline for mid-October and I finished on the 21st I think so I'm considering it it worked. I knitted in JC Rennie Chunky Aaron. It's funny because the, the brand JC Rennie had a booth at uh, Loch Ness Knit Fest and I went there and showed off with my new scarf. It's gigantic. I don't really know how to call it. It's a schlenket to to take to steal the word from Stephen West. It's actually taller than me. Admittedly, I'm not that tall, but still. And it took me forever. I cast it on at the end of November last year. This time not, I'm not mixing up February or March. It was November 2017. And I finished it so like almost a year later. Basically, you have a triangular shape in the beginning and then you reach the wider part and it's just straight repetitions of the same motif, which is probably part of why I took 
my husband's chair needs to be oiled. <laughs> um, I was saying it's probably part of why it took me so long to knit it because it's very repetitive and I easily get bored. I knit like five, four balls and then I set it aside and then I knit one more and then I set it aside and then I finally decided to finish it. It was nine balls of yarn so with 95 meters per ball. I will let you calculate how much that is. It's 855 meters. It's a lot and it was long with 3.75 millimeter needles. The I think the yarn she used for the original one was slightly thinner than this one, but I sticked with the same needle size because I wanted it to be dense and warm and thick, you know? Well, it's not really thick. It's more like fluffy, you know? I can wear it around my shoulders. I, I wore it like this several times already. I have a long sleeve garment on top and I just put it this way around my neck and shoulders and I look amazing. No, I really like it but I'm really also really glad it's finished and I don't think I will be making another one. I wore it unwashed and unblocked after it was finished in Scotland because it made me save space in my suitcase. Since I only had uh, cabin luggage, it was really necessary for me to finish it and be able to wear it, at least on the way back, because I bought something there and I needed the space. It was a bit complicated to, um, to, to block because it was so long. So I had to unroll a yoga mat and add like those foam mats after it. I blocked it completely flat with uh, combs. It's really beautiful. For the last finished object, I will actually insert a funny segment there. I will teleport to my friend Jaime and um, we're making the presentation together for our Zaza sweaters, which are finally finished. We managed to find the time to, um, to record something together. So there you go. And I will be back in a second or 10 minutes. Salut, Salut gens de YouTube <rire> Je me suis téléportée chez Amy. Salut euh, Et donc, pour qu'on puisse vous parler de, notre, de nos Zaza, nos pulls qu'on a tricotés ensemble. Ensemble, ouais. En duo Donc, nous voilà pour euh, présenter nos Zaza. Voilà, tout à fait. Vous donc, euh, nos Zaza, qu'est-ce que c'est Qu'est-ce que c'est C'est un pull Un pull qu'on ne voit pas trop parce qu'il n'y a pas trop de luminosité. C'est ça. Mais il est euh, Bordeaux. Euh, donc c'est un pull, un modèle de Marie Amélie euh, Designs. Salut Marie Amélie. Tout à fait. <rire> ben on s'est dit en fait c'était à Clamart je crois. Ouais. Que euh, on, on était devant le stand de de de, de, de Simone, Simone bah, Yarn by Simone. Euh, et on s'est dit que euh, ben ce serait une bonne. Enfin euh, je, je sais pas trop comment l'idée nous est venue en fait. Mais euh, on s'est dit que ce serait cool de tricoter le Zaza ensemble et du coup dans la même couleur. Voilà, parce qu'on n'a pas de personnalité. <rire> Donc on s'est fait, euh, bah, on s'est fait un petit shopping euh, chez Simone et puis euh, et puis on s'est lancé euh, des bloutes. Ouais, c'est ça. Exactement. On a castonné ensemble euh, du coup euh, l'ordre d'un tricoté. Ouais. Et euh, et du ah, pasteur. Exactement. J'ai décidé d'arrêter de l'appeler mon parmas parce qu'il n'est pas à mon parmas oui, ce tricoté, il est métro pasteur. Et en plus, on ne voit pas trop de thé. Donc, euh, voilà. <rire> donc, euh, donc, on a castonné ensemble en euh, août et euh, on l'a fini il euh, n'y a pas très longtemps. Hein, y a, euh, début en... octobre, je crois. Enfin, fin, ouais. fin septembre, début octobre Ouais, ça, ça doit être ça. Oui, parce qu'on l'a mis pour la première fois au Trico Market, c'était le 14. Exactement. Donc voilà, donc euh, on a exactement le même, on a fait exactement la même taille. Voilà, la différence c'est que moi j'ai fait la taille des... Enfin par rapport à l'échantillon que j'avais, j'ai fait la taille d'aiguille indiquée parce que mon échantillon était un peu serré. En fait, on serré... toutes les deux on était entre deux tailles. Et du coup on a décidé de faire la taille 110 qui était un peu grande. Mais comme donc mon échantillon était un peu serré, je l'ai fait dans la taille préconisée et toi tu l'as fait avec une taille d'aiguille un peu voilà. petite. Normalement j'aurais dû le faire en taille 3, 3,5 ouais. et du coup j'ai fait en 3,25 qui m'a permis d'avoir un petit peu plus petit que 110. Et au final voilà, on se retrouve exactement avec le même pull et on a eu exactement le même problème, c'est-à-dire qu'on s'est retrouvé avec genre un bout de manche grand comme ça. Ouais pour lequel on n'avait plus de fil. Mais c'est parce qu'on a joué un peu les malines aussi. Donc, comme, voilà. Parce que c'est comme on n'était pas sûr de la taille qu'on ferait quand on a acheté la laine, on est parti sur enfin, l'équivalent de trois échelons, parce que moi c'était des 600 mètres. Donc 1200 mètres. Exactement. Et euh, en fait, la taille 110 demande 1270, je crois. On s'est dit, mais non, mais ça passe 1200. Enfin, en fait, j'ai toujours euh, largement suffisamment euh, assez. Et non. en fait, bah non. Non, parce voilà. que comme c'est un form... enfin, il est un peu boxy, alors du coup, ben... Euh... 
bah, c'est un peu loose et du coup et bah, c'est un, un peu l'échec c'est un peu la loose et du coup il nous manquait genre ça euh, pour finir euh, chacune nos, nos voilà. deux manches en, Très en détricotant euh, l'échantillon oui en détricotant l'échantillon donc moi j'en ai, ai eu pour euh, 1242 mètres je crois quelque chose comme ça euh, parce que euh, une, une gentille abonnée euh, qui a bien voulu nous filer son reste, euh, je crois qu'elle avait fait un châle avec. Ouais. Et, euh, et du coup, coucou si tu nous regardes, ouais, ouais. Elle, elle, nous a bien voulu, elle a bien voulu nous donner son reste et du coup bah, on a pu terminer nos manches. Ouais, parce que c'est <rire> un peu con pour jouer ouais. ça quoi. C'est le terme un peu con. Hein. Exactement. <rire> et euh, n'empêche c'est quand même super parce que même si elle l'a pas acheté en même temps que nous, il euh, n'y a pas du tout de démarcation non. au niveau, euh, niveau de la couleur. Ouais, ouais. Aucune différence de... Ouais, absolument de rien de là, mais bon... Croyez-nous <rire> sur parole, c'est ça. <rire> et euh, du coup, ouais, c'est vraiment ouais. Euh, top. Ah si, il y a une différence entre les deux. Look, look ah, at the sieves. On va faire un zoom, je pense. Ouais. <rire> Moi, je vais me rapprocher. Euh, voilà. En fait, euh, toi, t'as oui. fait des côtes torse sur ouais. les manches, enfin sur les côtes euh, des manches et en bas. Et moi, j'ai fait des côtes normales. Voilà. Ouais. Et donc, euh, ça fait euh, un petit peu plus serré sur euh, ma version que sur la tienne. Mais moi ça me dérange pas parce que de toute façon je passe mon temps à remonter les manches sur mes manches sur ouais. les avant-bras donc euh, ça me dérange pas qu'elles soient pas ultra, euh, ultra étroites. Ouais, voilà. mais du coup le look est vraiment différent. Euh... Ouais, sur le. Pas, porté, pas, quand, pas quand il est porté, mais effectivement quand on les met à côté, ça n'a ouais. rien à voir. On a quand même un peu de personnalité. <rire> un tout petit peu, <rire> un petit peu quand même. <rire> euh, donc euh, pour euh, en revenir au pieu. Donc il s'agit d'un pull qui se tricote en top-down. Euh, on commence par le dos, si je ne m'abuse. Oui, on commence par le on dos. On commence par le dos. Donc en fait, le dos, euh, il est euh, en dentelle. Hein, il y a de la dentelle sur le dos et sur l'avant. Jusque là, jusque là, à peu près, sur ça, ouais. Euh, donc, euh, donc on commence par le motif de dentelle. Ensuite, on retourne, on, fait, on relève les mailles ici et on tricote le devant. Voilà. Il y a un panneau aussi de dentelle qui se termine en V ici. C'est ça. Derrière, le, la dentelle est droite, mais devant, ça fait une espèce de V. Non, et euh... <rire> et pas euh... notre faute, c'est novembre. Voilà, c'est ça. <rire> Pourtant, il est, il est 15h. Hein. Enfin, est... Ah ouais, 15... ouais, presque 16 quand même. Mmh. Bon, d'accord, mais un peu retard. Mais c'est pas grave. Mais de toute façon, ça aurait rien changé. Non, rien du tout. Donc, euh, donc voilà. Et ensuite, on rassemble ici. Et ensuite, on va continuer en rond euh, le corps. Ouais. Puis, on va relever les mailles à ce niveau ici. Et, euh, et donc euh, faire les manches. Et on termine par, euh, par l'encolure. Exactement. Voilà, moi j'ai fait, enfin toi t'as fait la même aussi Le C'est euh, ouais. ouais. du jersey euh, rouloté euh, normal, enfin ouais. euh, tout ce qu'il y a de plus simple. Donc faut, par contre il faut relever les mailles autour de la dentelle pour euh, faire la partie qui roulote en haut. Voilà. Exactement. Si il y a un truc qui moi qui m'a frappé quand, euh, quand j'ai relevé les mailles, enfin quand j'ai fait les manches, c'est à dire que euh, sur le patron, sur la photo, les photos du patron, on voit bien que les manches elles commencent, elles commencent là en fait, ouais. que la partie dentelle s'arrête vraiment bas sur le, sur le biceps. Ouais. Et en fait, euh, quand on tricote euh, le, le, le corps, et eh ben ça donne pas du tout, ouais. du tout cette impression là. Moi j'ai dit mais ça va pas être, enfin ça va être enfin, moi ça m'est arrivé là en fait. Voilà, c'est ça. Quand j'ai essayé le truc, à un moment donné, je crois que c'était pour voir si, le, si le, la largeur du corps c'était bien. Euh... Pardon, on est bravo. Amy devait mettre son téléphone en silencieux. Je l'ai dit il y a genre 5 minutes. Oui, elle n'a pas fait. <rire> euh, donc oui, quand... Euh... En l'essayant sans les manches, effectivement, la partie dentelle s'arrêtait là. Et puis en fait, une fois qu'on qu relève les mailles et qu'on tricote les manches, bah, je ne sais pas par quelle magie ça se <rire> fait comme ça, mais toujours est-il qu'on bah, se retrouve ouais. avec le, les manches qui commencent euh, comme sur les photos. Exactement. C'est pas mieux comme ça, cela dit. <rire> ouais, c'est sûr. <rire> mm. euh, Qu'est-ce qu'il y a d'autre Ben, pas grand-chose. Enfin, moi, j'ai trouvé super agréable à tricoter. Alors, euh, j'ai dû défaire... Euh, une fois, je crois, à la dentelle. C'est pas beaucoup. <rire> Pour moi, en tout cas. Euh, parce que je m'étais trompée sur un rang et en fait, je j'arrivais pas à rattraper. Enfin, je, je, comme je m'en suis rendu compte trois rangs plus tard, j'arrivais pas à rattraper. Et du coup, j'ai tout défait et ouais. j'ai remonté. Mais il n'y a pas de difficulté particulière sur la dentelle. Enfin, franchement, non, franchement, elle est super simple. Ouais, ouais. Euh... À suivre le diagramme il est, il est assez petit ouais. et euh, du coup on peut le mémoriser fa assez facilement mmh. et le patron est hyper bien écrit donc il n'y a vraiment aucun souci là dessus oui ça c'est sûr et euh, le fait que bah, du coup le motif euh, se change un petit peu et se termine en pointe enfin moi j'ai trouvé que c'était super motivant et du coup euh, on mmh. avait envie de, 
bah, d'arriver à la fin de ce motif là. Ouais, on voit une vraie progression quand on le tricote. Puis ce qui est chouette, c'est qu'en plus, comme, il se... enfin, comme toujours avec la dentelle, cela dit, ça se révèle vraiment au blocage quoi. Mm -hmm. Parce que tant qu'il n'est pas bloqué, c'est un peu flippé, voilà. Mais, mais quand il s'étire, ça rend vraiment super chouette. Ouais. Bon là, évidemment, si on vous montre comme ça, bah, une fois de plus, vous n'allez rien voir. Euh... Est-ce que, est que j'arrive à montrer un peu ah, ouais. Vaguement. Voilà. Ah ouais, regarde. Oh. Ouh, 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 dis donc. Dis donc. <rire> donc voilà. ouais. Non, c'est très très joli. Hein. Ouais. C'est vraiment très joli. Comme, euh, comme, euh, comme tous les patrons de Marie-Amélie, qui est une spécialiste des mochetés. Hein. C'est vraiment voilà. trop moche ce qu'elle fait. Euh, ouais, en plus, ouais. euh, je sais pas pourquoi j'en tricote plein, mais bon. Oui, parce voilà. que tu, tu vas te lancer dans sa, son local pour ses tricots, enfin sa collection de gilets. Hein. C'est prévu, mais voilà. j'ai d'autres trucs prévus aussi. <rire> Je sais pas comment je vais m'en sortir, mais bon, voilà. Mais bref, voilà, ce, le patron est super, euh, il est en français et en anglais. Ouais, il est... Moi j'ai sans... tricoté en anglais, parce que j'aime euh... me faire du mal. <rire> <rire> Moi j'ai tricoté en français parce que bah, j'avais le patron euh, imprimé en, mm. en français. Donc. Ah ouais, mais du coup, ça t'a permis de voir qu'il euh, y avait une petite modif sur le rabattage des mailles, c'est mm. assez drôle. C'est vrai. Euh... Oui, du coup, en plus, ça m'a permis de découvrir un nouveau, une nouvelle manière de rabattre les mailles. Oui, parce que moi, je dis rabattage. Je... Oui, moi aussi, je, je dis rabattage. Je dis pas rabat. Hein. Je suis désolée pour les puristes. Euh, Team rabattage. Les, les gens à qui ça fait mal de l'entendre, mais moi, je dis rabattage. <rire> Donc, j'ai découvert un nouveau rabattage, c'est le rabattage à l'islandaise, et je trouve ça vraiment super chouette. Ça fait une espèce de... Je sais pas, ça fait, une tr... ça fait quelque chose entre une tresse et une corde. Ouais. Et euh, ça fait pas un bourrelet euh, comme ferait un i-cord. Bah, moi, je l'ai fait sur le col. Et ouais, ça, ça rend bien. Moi j'ai fait par du coup. Donc j'ai eu la flemme. Ah non, parce que j'avais pas internet et du coup je, je pouvais ah oui, pas regarder pas vérifier. Ok voilà. Mais euh, ouais. Ouais, il est super sympa, il est le fait Ouais. Il est cool. Bravo Marie Amélie. <rire> non puis cela dit, euh, moi je suis contente qu'on l'ait fait en... dans cette, dans cette laine-là aussi. Parce que ça rend vachement bien en fait. J'étais mmh. un peu inquiète de me dire que ce serait peut-être trop foncé pour qu'on voit bien la dentelle. Mais en fait, non. Mais en fait, non, ça rend. Il ouais. n'y a que là, maintenant, sur à l'image, qu'on ne voit pas bien. Ouais. <rire> Mais en vrai, ça rend super bien. Et on a eu euh, pas mal de compliments sur la couleur. Et oui euh, Vraiment. Euh... Oui, oui. Ouais. Euh, gros, gros succès. succès. Gros succès. Euh, on n'a pas dit, d'ailleurs. Et j'ai pas alterné les écheveaux, moi, en tout cas. Mmh. Voilà. Je n'ai pas alterné les écheveaux parce que je ne le fais jamais et que je suis. Moi, dans ce que j'ai pas non plus alterné. Et, et euh, pas, pas de problème. Soucis. Non, non, pas de souci. Par contre, ça dégorge. Un peu. Ouais. Au lavage. Et, ça, hein. et, et, et on n'a pas parlé de la laine. Non, c'est vrai, on n'a pas parlé de la laine. <rire> et donc la laine, c'est... Euh... Sur nous. <rire> ben, on a dit de qui elle venait quand même. Oui, c'est vrai, c'est vrai. Et d'où on l'a acheté. <rire> donc, <rire> donc euh, du coup, il s'agit de la laine Yarn by Simone. Voilà. Euh, c'est de la 100% Merino Superwash. Et c'est le coloris Madame Rêve. Voilà. Un très très beau euh, vieux, bordeaux euh, profond. Oui. Qui... C'était drôle quand je les ai achetés, les écheveaux, parce que personne n'était capable de se mettre d'accord sur la couleur. Ah ouais Moi je trouvais qu'il était bordeaux, mais ouais. j'ai entendu violet très foncé, oui, prune, euh... ouais c'était assez drôle, il n'y avait pas vraiment de consensus, mais en plus c'est un vrai bordeaux. Hein. Moi je suis d'accord, c'est ouais, ouais. bordeaux. Et, euh, et sinon, ben oui, ce qui est vachement bien euh, avec euh, Yarn by Simon, c'est que euh, des fois elle a des écheveaux qui font donc 600 mètres, ça fait c'est des écheveaux. Donc c'est quand même vachement pratique euh, pour, euh, pour quand on a fait un, une pièce qui n'a pas besoin de... comment ça s'appelle qui n'a pas besoin de, de plus de deux écheveaux. Euh, Puisqu'ils sont légèrement moins chers, je crois. Ouais, ouais. c'est carrément moins cher. Enfin, ils sont à 25 euros les chevaux. C'est ça. Donc, euh, donc, ça fait 50 euros le pull. Ouais. Alors que euh, bah celui-là, c'était euh, 120 euros les chevaux. Ouais, 19 finalement. Ouais, J'en ai, ai eu pour 60 euros. Mmh. Moi, parce que c'est pas une énorme différence, mais ça non. peut, ça peut compte, ça peut jouer aussi. Ouais. Et c'est vrai que du coup, bah, on a moins de risques aussi euh, d'avoir des différences de bord, ouais. des différences de couleur. Ouais. Moins on a des chevaux, moins il y a de risques forcément. Logique. <rire> pas bête. <rire> <rire> bah écoute, je crois qu'on a fait le tour, non Bah ouais. Bah, sauf si t'as d'autres trucs à dire. Pas spécialement. Ouais. Enfin, on peut les essayer. Ouais. On va, on va les s'habiller. Ouais. Parce que bon, voilà. A tout de suite A tout de suite <rire> Tada Voilà. Donc euh, on voit toujours rien, mais, euh, mais du coup, bah, on va bah, les amener encore. <rire> voilà. Euh, donc c'est ce qu'on disait, la, vous voyez, la dentelle, elle descend vachement bas sur le bras. Ouais, ouais, ouais. Contrairement aux apparences euh, quand on tricote. Et du coup, on fait des, des close-up quand même. Ouais. Ou là, ou... Ouais. Peut-être avec des petits lignes. On fait une. Euh... <rire> <rire> Allez, fais une pause! <rire>
I hope you enjoyed this segment, which is a bit different from what I usually do. That's it for my finished objects. I will go on with the works in progress. I have several since I, I cast off several projects recently, so I thought I could start a few more. And most are pretty small, so it won't take me too long and I can go on with... I think I only have like two long-standing whips which should go back on my needles. So the first one I will only um, I will only speak briefly because it's a test for my friend Marie Amélie, Marie Amélie Designs, who also designed the, the Zaza sweater actually. It's going to be a hat and its construction is very specific, but I won't tell you more today because I think it's a bit of a secret. I'm knitting it with the um, soft fingering base of my friend Imogen, whom I accompanied um, to the Loch Ness Knit Fest. And this one is called Caillou dans le ciel. It's very, very nice. It's a very tonal grey. I love it. So that's it for this uh, small project. I started something yesterday to change a bit for a bit of mindless knitting so to speak. I, I actually wanted something easy and quick and I was standing in front of my stash and I thought, hmm, these two need to have something happen to them. It's the leftover from my secret sweater. So that's the Aphrodite base and that's the Orphe base, both from Lena Mouret. This one is alpaca, cashmere and silk and this one is mohair and silk. So it's super luxurious. Oh, yeah, I pulled the wrong end the other, yesterday and I just put it back. It's going to be super soft and super warm and I went for a hat and this is the perfect example that um, we say in French Il n'y a que les imbéciles qui ne changent pas d'avis. So that's only only idiots never change their minds. And I decided not to be an idiot. For several months now, I've been thinking, what the hell do people have with the Kobuk hat by uh, Caitlin Hunter? I There was something that bothered me about it, but I couldn't really set my finger on it. And when I thought, okay, I want to make a mohair hat, um, I went back to it and I looked at it and I and I finally understood what, what I found wrong about it. It was all the bubbles on top actually I really they're really not my thing on the hat uh, so I've decided to go for it but I will remove the bubbles and add a few ridges so please keep your fingers crossed that my ID doesn't end up in a total disaster but so far I'm only up the ribs I think I still have like the same um, the same amount of rows to knit to finish the ribs and then I will go on with the motif and then we will see and it will go perfectly well with the the project I started last week most likely I will wear them together it's a shawl taking of this protection I found this amazing so you just it's basically just a metal tube with it's not foam i don't know what it is it's plastic i guess you just put the needles in and it's amazing i've resisted buying one for a long time and i have no idea why because it's really super convenient anyway enough of that so the shawl is the together shawl by uh, pia camerbon and i'm knitting it with the uh, le petit lambs wool by Biche Buche, which I bought at Le Tricot Market uh, like three weeks ago. The color is yellow mustard. And as much as I dislike the bubbles on the hat, on the Kobuk hat, I really like them on this shawl. Let's be honest, bubbles on the shawl plus a hat would have been way overkill. It's a very... I, w I was about to say basic, but it's not really basic. It's, it's simple, but it's not basic. It's a triangular shawl, very easy to follow pattern. It's going to be so nice. The original, the pattern calls for a sport weight yarn, but I, it's this one is light fingering. It's two hundred and forty eight meters per fifty grams, so it's going to be light and airy, but then it's still going to be warm because it is regular wool. So it's not going to be too heavy or too dense, but it's going to be warm, and that's what I want. So I'm knitting it with three and a half millimeter needles, and it's super social like I basically bring it everywhere with me I carry it in my bag in my origami bag by La Chiavalen which I bought also at Le Tricot Market and which which matches so I carry it that way around my arm and I just knit on it all the time I bring it to parties I bring it to physio physiotherapy when I need to when I know that I will have to wait sometimes I knit while I walk but I try to avoid doing that because I'm very clumsy and my ankle is not super stable yet so it's better if I concentrate on on where I put my feet rather than my needles but if it's just the the bubbles are one row out of four so on regular pearl or knit rows I can still walk and knit at the same time and I'm actually really glad that the bubbles are only uh, are only every four rows because it's so long. 
it takes so long to knit it's crazy it takes me like half an hour to knit one row now because there i have like 42 or 44 bubbles now don't remember I counted yesterday at some point point. and i think in the end you well she says on the pattern that she has what 56 or 58 so gonna be long 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 i have four balls of the yarn and i only used one so far so i don't know um, i don't i don't know how i will proceed if i have like i will finish two and i will see how far i am and i will see if i go on to get just a larger shawl or if i leave it like that and make a pair of um, matching mittens we will see mittens no matching mitts I will never get this right. <laughs> so we will see how it how it goes, but for just one week of knitting, I think it's not too bad. But of course, it goes much faster at the beginning always. I have no idea how many stitches I have there, but a few. That's actually it for my works in progress. I will not go back to the Loch Ness Knit Fest because I talked about it at length on Instagram while I was there. We had live videos with Imogen and Mathieu. But to sum it up, it was bit of a disaster for us. I know that it went really well for others and I'm super happy about it for them, but it didn't work out for us. At least we spent time with good people. That's actually the highlight of it. The people I got to spend time with, be it uh, the people I went to Scotland with or the people I met there. Yeah, it was the people. I got to spend more time with Saha from La Cavalaine, whose bag this one is, who had the booth right in front of ours, or across from the Ale in front of ours. So um, we... <laughs> made faces at each other and it was really fun and um, I also got to spend time with Alice Hammer whom I didn't know personally I, m I met her at the Le Trico Market the previous week but I we didn't really talk or anything and she's adorable she's really lovely so um, so yeah it was nice to get to know her better also her boyfriend and her son it was really nice and I was super happy to see Tanya again from TJ Frog um, she was a bit further down the um, down the aisle and and she was lovely as as always so um, yeah it was it was super nice to get to catch up with her a bit and the last person I actually was super happy to meet was Julie from Black Eye Leon who had the booth right next to ours she is the loveliest person and i got six skeins from her Zwart balls bfl blend it's 50 50 it's so soft <laughs> it's so soft she showed me what she was knitting with it and once it's washed and blocked and even just knit you know it's so soft it's going to be amazing and i will make the mr rochester sweater by alice hammer it smells so good mm, i love the sh that sheep smell so that's the only thing i got actually from the from the festival not to mention the fact that my suitcase was like full basically and they had cabin luggage as i was saying and there's that mystery you know that when you travel when you're well on the on the way to a place if you get your suitcase super organized and it's all folded and it works perfectly and you even have some room to spare and then on the way back i don't know even if you fold things correctly it just it just gets messy and you have no space anymore and you have to sit on your suitcase to close it you know I don't know. I, it's crazy. It's one of the, the deep mysteries of life, which I don't think I will ever understand. Anyway, that's all I bought, but I'm really happy with it. I am glad I was reasonable. I didn't knit that much. Well, I, I haven't been that productive in the, in the knitage competition. Not as much as I was during the first game. Now we're at the end of the third and I only have a, like a silver snitch. So that's 500 meters knit. The next threshold is 800 meters and I don't think I can reach that tomorrow. Well, until tomorrow night. That would be 300 meters. That's, that would be a lot. So I will stick with uh, what I did and uh, and it's going to be fine that way. There will be the semi-finals afterwards and then the finals and, and hopefully we win this year, unlike last year. I think we got our asses handed out to us. The last thing I wanted to tell you about is my Christmas call. It's called the Ho 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 call. Uh, basically, the idea is to uh, knit Christmas presents for the knit worthy people in your life. It all happens on my Ravelry group. There are already quite a few people who signed up for it. So you just, the only requirement, well, it started two days ago on the 1st of November. So the only requirement is that your project has not been started before the 1st of November, unless it's a big project and then like, I. I discuss them with myself on a case-by-case -case basis if they're like 
I think I set the limit at 30% um, knitted before the 1st of November to be to be able to enter it. Because I understand that if you have a bigger, bigger piece like a jumper or a big scarf or something, sometimes you might need more than the 54 days that are allocated for the for the cow so if you want to sign up please do check out my Ravelry group and uh there will be uh there are already very very cool sponsors so um there will be uh, like i will pick winners and the at the end one finished object is one entry in the giveaway so the sponsors well the people who have agreed to sponsor the 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 knit along are so amazing and i'm really so happy that um that i get to spread the love for these people and and offer you um, offer you such cool stuff so i will thank I will thank them more properly and more in detail when it's all set up, but I can tell you it's going to be really cool prices and I'm looking forward to it. I think we've seen it all and I think I told you everything I had set out to do today. I hope you enjoyed this episode. It was really nice having you with me today. If you had a good time, please like, subscribe, share, comment. I'm not super good at answering comments, but I, I do it just not necessarily super fast that's something i need to work on but it's always a pleasure to read what you what you um, what you write and uh, thank you so see you very soon and in the meantime take good care of you enjoy your craft bye on fait quoi bah je sais pas <laughs> ah mais d'accord t'as les cheveux bah vas-y on s'échauffe ah ouais attends des cheveux pour nous je suis flou je le suis flou <laughs> vachement plus sexy que les achats dans l'homme. Hé On fait des On a un vrai talent quand même. Hein ouais. Pourquoi Je suis pas trop sûre. Euh... <rire>